So guys, it's gotten worse for Black China. Currently in the court, it looks like she's losing. Khloe Kardashian is winning, guys. And it doesn't look good for Candy Boris as well. Hey guys, it's Marab Morali. Hope you guys are all doing well today. Back at it again with another video. If you have not subscribed, guys, click that button. It is daily and consistent content, guys. Consistent and persistent, baby. And let's get straight into this video, guys. Click that button. So we have, you know, the courts, the lawsuits, they're not over yet for Black China and the, and the Kardashian girls. Things are still going on and it will go head to head and finalize in April. Um, but it seems that Khloe Kardashian has scored a small victory in her legal battle with Black China, with the judge ordering Rob Kardashian's ex fiance to turn over financial documents. According to court documents obtained by Radar, an LA Superior Court judge has granted a request brought by Khloe that demanded China hand over certain records relating to her OnlyFans income and money made from her music career. Chloe had been demanding the records, claiming the information is relevant to the case at hand. China initially scoffed at the request, arguing that Chloe didn't have a right for the information. Chloe and her family have cited no authority, nor can they, to compel the production of documents relating to earnings from a career job skilled, not helped by the China at the time of the injury caused by the defendants. Although Chloe Kardashian incessantly meddled in her brother's life in 2016 and 17, and had asked Rob why he hadn't ever slept with a Chloe lookalike. Chloe has not permitted to seek discovery for a cause of action that has not been asserted against her, her motion read. However, of course, the judge sided with Chloe, ordering that China must turn over OnlyFans income and records, along with certain therapy documents and answers on income she earned from her music career. So it's unfortunate, but it looks like, you know, she's lost that particular, you know, small battle. Chloe has won that. She's granted the information of therapy. It's quite invasive. Her OnlyFans income and any, uh, any other income that she may have is going to be given over to Chloe so she can assess and see what she wants to see so that that can be used as ammunition against Black China when it comes to the courts. Very interesting indeed to see how that is going to play out. But it looks like, you know, China has lost when it comes to that, unfortunately. Now, it doesn't look good for, you know, Candy Burris. <clears throat> I really thought her name was Barus. <laughs> Listen, I, really, I was really out here calling her Candy Barus. God forbid. Like, I really must have dyslexia or something because Barus, I don't know what I was saying. Candy Barus. Anyways, um, it's not looking good for her, guys. She's um, not looking good for her, unfortunately. Now, we, now, I love Miss Candy. We all love a bit of Candy, but I love her because of her mind, how she works, how she markets herself. She's always very successful, opens many businesses, is the most successful housewife, period. However, her new show, which launched last night, Candy and the Gang, the ratings were extremely low and people were quite shocked by it. And now, you know, you could argue that it was coming in um, behind Raw Housewives of Salt Lake City. And to be honest with you, nobody really wants to watch that post Mary Cosby and, you know, Portia show, which you know had doubled the amount of engagement as a premiere came in led by you know Real Housewives of Atlanta which is much stronger so one could argue that you know that has a strong avenue and this is Candy's sixth spin-off show anyways but you know this is going to be a separate entity and perhaps the low figures will gradually grow bigger and bigger and bigger because it's going to be a series that is already renewed for season uh, for two more seasons but to start off and not even have a 500,000 and you have had so much promo that I've ever seen for a spin-off show and to not even reach 500,000 is extremely low guys and not a good sign but I'm sure that the network isn't worried and that they'll assess it after the season has ended but it's already been renewed for two more seasons and by then hopefully it'll be better Better, but I don't know if I want to, I personally don't want to see Candy. I want to see her in a ensemble with the girls. I don't really see, want to see her with her mother and Todd. And we've seen those issues. We've seen everything. It's all been solved now. So what else can they give? What else can Candy give? I don't know. Now, that isn't the only issue that is bad news for her, unfortunately. But it looks like, you know, her both Atlanta restaurants have been hit with low health scores, guys. Yes, you've heard of that. Um, Candy, but... Um, Boris's restaurants have failed to score higher than a C when it came time for a health department inspection, with both Old Lady Gan and Blaze holding the mediocre rating. Whew. The two restaurants have yet to improve on their C scores. Old Lady Gang's last inspection was in July 2021. The health department investigator noted the manager not displaying active managerial control to prevent foodborne illness, with sliced cheese, raw salmon, and sliced tomatoes being kept at temperatures above 41 degrees. Old Lady Gang was also inspected weeks prior on July. Um, the official observed 
the main kitchen with no hand soap and also noticed the sliced cheese, raw hamburger, shrimp, chicken and crab cake were not stored at the proper temperature. The other restaurant owned by Candy and Tucker, Blaze Steak and Seafood, had also had issues with its health inspection. It has a 77 rating in a C-score. The inspector observed hot, potentially hazardous food received at less than 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Further toxic substances weren't properly identified. The inspector had issues with two unlabeled spray bottles of chemicals. The report also noted they observed expired buttermilk that was not not thrown away. Furthermore, they noted both back doors were open, which could be an issue when it comes to rodents and animals coming in. The C score was actually an improvement for Candy and Todd because Blade had, Blaze has scored a 55 in May 2021. Not that being the improvement. So it doesn't really look good for her when it comes to the restaurants, um, unfortunately. And of course, they had to earn 23000 in back taxes. But, you know, hopefully it will improve. I do hope so, because I do think that, you know, she's very successful. She's got a good mind on her hand. But to have your low show being premiered and then, you know, your rations coming out with these low scores still continuously, it does, you know, bode well. Not It, it, it doesn't bode well, sorry. Um, Giz, um, Giselle. Giselle Bryant's ex-husband, Jamal, um, you know, the holy pastor from the House of Potomac, is now being accused of owning $66,000 that he needs to pay up to the IRS. But guys... The sky is also blue, water is wet, what else is new? Really and truly, what else is new? Anyways, let me know your thoughts out, guys, when it comes to, you know, all of this. I don't know if you guys have heard about Chris Brown stuff, let me just throw this in this as well. But, you know, the woman suing Chris Brown over an alleged 2020 um, assault on a yacht outside Diddy's house sent the singer an audio message months later pleading for his attention. On August 23rd, 2021, the alleged victim sent Brown a 22-second record saying, just want to, you know, with you again, while you, whilst you're giving me mixed signals, you're like reading my messages and stuff and you haven't blocked me yet, so I'm guessing you don't hate me. I just wanna see you again. I mean, you just answered the phone and then you just hung up. Like, just let me know. If you want me to leave you alone, I definitely will, but I really just want to, you know, with you again. Brown did not respond to the message. Radar also obtained a series of text exchanges between the professional dancer and the singer from December to August 2021. The woman using the pseudonym Jane Doe is suing for 20 million, claiming that, you know, Brown did stuff to her, you know, with the R word. Now, it's interesting because one would say, you know, if that is what she's accusing him of, why is she messaging him wanting to meet again? If you've, if you've gone through this horrific experience with this man, you wouldn't want to continuously bombard him with messages wanting to meet him over and over again. You wouldn't do stuff like that. It doesn't make any sense. So now that begs the question, you know, it damages the credibility of her case. These tech matches have come out. It's also coming out around when Chris Brown is coming back with albums. Is there an agenda against him when it comes to stuff like this? I'm not a fan of Chris Brown because we know he's done stuff to Karuchi and Rihanna. That in itself is given factual information. However, it doesn't change the fact that this particular woman, her story is odd because why would you accuse somebody of the R word, take them to court, 20 million, but then messages are now coming out of you begging to hang with him again and you know upset that he's not responding to you. That wouldn't be your immediate response if someone has done an R word to you and is disrespectful to those who've been in a position where they've had the R word unfortunately been done to them. It's just food for thought, not trying to victim blame, we're trying to assess this, the you know entire situation for what it is. I'm not a major fan of Chris Brown, guys. I'm honestly not. I feel like, he, you know, yes, he's talented. We all can obviously admit that. But I think that a lot of people forget about what he's done to Karuchi and Rihanna. And a lot of the stuff that he was doing, guys, was unfortunate and, and just very intense. Anyways, let me know your thoughts out, guys. It was really meant to be just one topic, but I thought, let me just throw everything in here because why the hell not? Subscribe to the channel. Click that button. It is daily and consistent content. Consistent and persistent, baby. Click that button. It's just one click. Then the notifications bell. Be subscribed to the channel, guys. Let's raise subscribers, show some support. I would appreciate it. Head over to my Instagram, sign up to my Patreon just for support. I would appreciate that as well. And I will catch you guys soon for another video.